I can my Lord, uh, assure your Lordships that every judgment which I have quoted, I'm not going to cite. I would be very naive if I quote yes. judgments which I know your Lordships have read. the citation and the paragraphs so that I have quoted them. Oh, I see. So I will say that kindly read it. I am not going to read except few judgments which I am unable to resist flag, them. You may just flag those. That's all for us. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, this is my Lord, the copy is given. Leave yourself a little time to deal with the challenges to the amendments to the statutes. Huh? No, these are not deep objects. Right, right. We, are, we have now covered the scheme. No. I'm just saying that since you have an hour to conclude, give yourself a little time to deal with the challenge to the statutory amendments. I, I, that's what my, Lord, my answer is. One line answer. The statutory amendments are to ensure that this scheme can be framed and can be operated. That's the purpose of the there amendment. Is, there are no separate no objects. Separate. Yeah, that, that's okay. And you have they really are, covered the reasonableness aspect. They, well. There are corollary. Yes. Uh, uh, to well, the scheme. First, it came under the Reserve Bank of India Act. The government can formulate the scheme. That is challenge to the Reserve Bank of India Act. Well, Lord, now, by itself is not illegal. Just wanted to ask you this. It may not be very relevant for the, but just to understand the legal framework. Why was it necessary to amend the RBI Act actually to bring in the scheme? I mean, as a matter yeah. of law, what was the reason? Uh, that I, we just have that. I have, in fact, it opened here at page thirty-one in yeah. your uh, in your uh, written submissions. Uh, section thirty-one says that no person except the Reserve Bank of India or the central government can issue a bill of exchange, uh, promissory note. Uh, or engagement for the payment of money payable to be uh, to bearer on demand. Well, it would be a bearer bond, my lord, yeah. because, because the reason seems to be, and that's RBI's report, that only central government and RBI is permitted under that section. The issuance is being done by SBI now. So you, no, 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 a, no, 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 that, that's not the idea. Yes, so it's somebody else which is being permitted, and that's one of the reasons which the RBI's letter also, which I think Mr. Bhushan showed to you. Lord, there is no, uh, okay, like, no, nothing turns on the, uh, and you will not succeed or lose on this. But, my lord, the purpose was. 31, 31 may have word. 31, 31. Please see, my lord, one. This is to make an exception to one. That there's an authority or the legal then the statutory to backing to statutory. the scheme. That's, That's what to be confronted with the legal that challenge. That is a purely executive act. Minus yes, yes. otherwise it would have been challenged as an executive act. Backing. It could have been said that it's a bearer bond, only the RBI can issue, etc., etc. And therefore, my lord, with a view to empower the central government to come out with this policy. And it would otherwise fall within the broad definition of a bill of exchange. Exactly. Or, or a bearer uh, lord, instrument. Uh, they say uh, payment of money payable to bearer on demand to borrow or engagement for the payment of money payable to bearer on demand. Engagement and, is very broad. And one, uh, therefore, that Lord, subsection three, one, first line, yes, first line, subsection one, no person in India other than the bank, that is RBI, or as expressly authorized by this act. So, this is the authority given to the central government. That's all. But to give a statutory backing okay. so that it doesn't remain an administrative instrument. All right. Now, what next, Mr. Shabsita? Yes. Well, Lord, now, what I'm reading is on the screen, my Lord. Uh, I, I have shared, my Lord. To uh, read, the, read this out? Or one and two, Roman one and two. Okay. I've said, nothing to hide, my Lord. I've said that the chairman has, my Lord, one should trust the uh, system, etc. Third, without elaborating, however, a brief description of the system can be provided to the court to satisfy the court's conscience <clears throat> that it is impossible for anyone, including the incumbent government, to breach this system without a the contingency contemplated under Sec Clause 7.4 or b without leaving a digital footprint and trail if someone tries to breach into the system over and beyond the mandate of Clause 7.4. The process for providing donations through electoral bond has two separate compartments and they are issuance of bond and redemption of bond. Correct, my lord, your lordship knows. I, I leave it at Three, in order to maintain confidentiality of the process, the data that is populated at both ends is recorded in a limited manner and not populated in the central databases. It doesn't contain the name of the donor. My Lord, I can purchase it from Assam, Guwahati, because that is one of the SBI branches and pay in Delhi to 
Indian National Congress or Bharatiya Janata Party because their office is situated here. They can have their authorized account practically, generally in Delhi, but anywhere in the country. And I can purchase it from Delhi and pay to Trinamool Congress in Calcutta. They would have their account in Calcutta. Now, four, separate storage and separate collection of data ensures that there are no direct linkages maintained in the database between the donor details with donee details. Five, the register which is maintained at the designated branch, please mark this, which issues the bond does not maintain the register with names of the purchaser or the donor. So if I go and buy a bond worth one, uh, 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 one crore, the register would only say one bond issued, one crore rupees. My name will not come. The only person, my Lord, I, I must my Lord, tell your lordships, which would temporarily come to know would be the cashier, my Lord, when I go with my KYC documents. Because the issuing bank, the issuing bank. Yeah, yes, the one person. 11.1 11 so, says, all payments for the issuance of the bond shall be accepted in Indian rupees through demand draft or check or through electronic clearing system or direct debit to the buyer's account. Yeah, yes, so it, it will have to be through banking draft, channel. So no, the purpose the is the issuing bank and the, therefore the issuing bank has all the uh, data. No, no, I, I, it would come, therefore it would come. The only person who first know my name and my is the person to whom I give KYC. Then KYC is sealed, sealed cover is maintained elsewhere, but it comes. The details of donor, i.e. the KYC details are put in a sealed at the end of each tranche because within 15 days, many people purchases many multiple bonds. But I may purchase you know, 10 bonds worth 10 lakhs of rupees. Uh, trenches by the designated branch and sent in a sealed cover from uh, uh, form to the SBI main branch, Mumbai main branch, where it remains sealed till the contingency under clause 74 arises. So, Guwahati, where purchases are made, or Trivendram, where purchases are made, will send it in a sealed form to Bombay. So far as the redemption of these bonds by the political parties is concerned, each party can deposit such bond only in their designated account. In account details of the political party also, only the amount of the bond will be reflected. As the bond does not contain the name of either purchaser, donor or the political party. The political parties would have one designated account in one branch out of the designated branches of SBI in which only the redemption of electoral bond is permissible. So bond may have been purchased Malod, from Chennai, but will be redeemed or can be redeemed in Calcutta. However, the political party can present the bond for redemption in any of the designated branches, which will credit the amount only in the main designated branch. They can go to Jaipur and say that this is my, uh, my bond. If the money would be transferred without anybody's name to the designated account, wherever it is maintained, one designated account. At the time of redemption, the original bond, the pain slip would be stored, uh, would be storage in a sealed cover and sent to SBI Mumbai main branch. Both the seals, sealed covers cannot be opened either together or at different times except under the contingency under clause 74 arises. In the event of contingency under clause 74 arising, it would be very difficult to trace out that even after that, Malod, kindly see this. It's not as if we open the cover and match it. Trace out the details of the purchaser of the bond as such purchaser may have purchased several bonds from several designated branches in different branches. In other words, several sealed covers may have to be opened and examined. Two. So far as details of redemption details are concerned, they are stored in the Global Information Technology Center of SBI, which stores the data in a digital format. In case the link between the donee and the donor is required to be established, in terms of Clause 74, it would require a detailed and in-depth tracing out of information from two different information silos of donors and donees. The said exercise is not automated and cannot be carried out in a linear fashion and requires a scanning of 
different databases which are designed without maintaining interlinkages. Therefore, the process of issuance and redemption of electoral bond and data generated therewith is not maintained in a central database and the data sheets are not populated and tallied at one end. There exist no direct linkages and completely separate information silos are stored under separate heads with separate departments. So I'll have to ask several people to collude with me if I want to get the information. Because Lord, I have not given that, but this uh, center, Lord, Global Information Technology Center also, as I was not explained, I was also not explained in detail and nor did I insist. But they also have three, four layers. It goes, the, 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 the request with the court order goes to one, he will open, then it goes at a second layer, then he opens, and then everything is digitized, leaving the footprints. And therefore, my Lord, to satisfy our Lordship's conscience, I say that please criminalize if there is anybody who breaches this system. Yes, yes. Now, my Lord, I'll uh, come to my Lord. Please come to page 36 of my written submissions. <clears throat> the, rather, my Lord, I would, my Lord, at page 37, my Lord, I have quoted Putu Swami. And my Lord, I'll, I'll abide by the time, my Lord, your Lordships have indicated. But your Lordships would, my Lord, bear with me. I have never, I don't, I, I have not repeated, my Lord, except. No, no, not at all. Lord, I am not reading this, Puttu Swami, my Lord, yeah. your Lordships, all of my Lords have read and yeah. read it. But the purpose, I'll say, Lord, your Lordships have devised this concept of informational privacy. Lord, your Lordships were examining two competing interests, namely, one, right to know and second, yes. right to have informational privacy. Yes. 